folks, Adam here, and today we are going to be comparing different magnet types and how they affect the sound of the Seymour Duncan JB humbucker. Now, this year has been a weird year, 2020, and like many of you, when the pandemic lockdowns started happening around the country and really the world, um, like many gear friends, I was very, very bored. Um, I do work from home, but I had a lot of free time on my hands, and I was bored enough to want a project. You know, I couldn't really scratch that itch. And so what I did is I actually did my first guitar build. Um, so this is Betty. This is a, uh, a Warmoth Strat, and it turned out really, really nice. Talk a little bit more about Betty in a second, but really what I wanted to do was when it came to pickups, I knew I wanted a humbucker single, single configuration in a Strat. I just, that's, that's, the, that's the config I wanted. But in terms of the humbucker, while I knew I wanted the JB, I had done some research and I had found out online through such sites as the Seymour Duncan forums, as well as the gear page, that if you swap a magnet, or if you swap a different type of magnet rather, into the JB, it could affect the sound, either from a very subtle perspective or a very large perspective. Um, and so I was really intrigued by that. I wanted to find out what that would exactly do to the sound. Now, I've played guitar with JBs for many, many, many years. The JB is one of those polarizing pickups. Um, it's kind of like the vintage 30 of guitar pickups because it has that really screaming upper mid spike, which pros of that definitely helps you cut through any mix like a hot knife through butter. However, if you're like me and you are a strict bedroom player, then that typical JB might be a little harsh um, under the wrong context. And that's kind of what has characterized the polarizing response to the JB over the past you know, three or four decades that it's been around. Um, it is one of those pickups where you either love it or you hate it. And if you hate it, you want to get rid of it as fast as you can. However, today we're going to see what different magnet types do in this guitar. So what I've done is I've got three JB trembuckers. These are the trembuckers with the uh, F spacing, they're not the regular standard humbuckers. That shouldn't affect it too much though. So I've got three of these. I've got this guy, this Zebra one. Then I've got this white JB trembucker. And finally, I've got a brand new, still in the box, JB Trembucker. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be swapping magnets for, with all three of these pickups to see exactly what they do to the sound. Now, in terms of magnets, I'm not going to go through the, the various characteristics of these magnets today. I'm actually going to put some links in the uh, info section of the video because there's a lot of videos that do a much better job them I'm, I'm about to in terms of describing the magnets. But what I will say is today we're going to be looking at Alnico magnets. So aluminum, nickel, cobalt magnets. Um, typically a classic choice for many, many, many pickups um, and also is the default magnet type of the Seymour Duncan JB. So today we're going to be looking at five, like I said. Um, all of these except for one are polished and that's very, very important because you can either get magnets that are polished or you can get magnets that are rough cast. Um, and I'll, I'll explain the difference in just a second. But today we're gonna be looking at five. We have an Alnico 2. We have an unoriented A5. We have a rough cast A5. I'm gonna talk to you about that in just a second. The standard A5, this is actually one of the, this is a magnet I pulled out of a Seymour Duncan JB pickup. And then the Alnico 8, or the A8 for short. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, why does he have a rough cast A5 is he, if he's gonna be comparing polished magnets? Though, the reason is, back in the day, <laughs> 70s and 80s, when the JB was first out, um, and especially when the JB became very, very famous, um, they used to use these rough cast 
A5 magnets in them. And so um, anyone who looks on the web for like classic examples of 80s JBs, um, the JBJ comes to mind. That was a JB that was uh, that from the 80s that had a rough cast A5. It was wound by the uh, famous Maricela Juarez from Seymour Duncan. Um, this is the type of magnet that would come in that pickup. And so in terms of testing, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be swapping all of these magnets in and out of my three pickups. So the only one that we're not gonna do any swaps is with this JB Trembucker, the stock factory version that I have. This is gonna be our reference pickup. Um, so we're not gonna do any modifications to this. And this will be the first one you hear in each of the groups of sound clips, both the clean, the crunch, the lead, and then the overdriven lead. Um, this will be the pickup that you hear first, just to kind of give you an understanding of this is what a modern JB sounds like. And then we're gonna go through from most vintage to kind of most modern in terms of how they're perceived by most folks on the web. So from the the JB with the polished Alnico 5. We're gonna go from that to the A2 polished. Then we're gonna go to the unoriented A5 polished. Next, we're gonna go to the rough cast A5. I'm gonna throw the, the stock JB in again in progression, just so you can kind of hear it in the beginning, but then you can kind of hear it in the mix so you can really understand what impact these magnets are having on the overall sound of the pickups. So, like I said, we're gonna have the A5 polished or the one that's in the factory JB coming up. And then at the very end, we're gonna have our El Nico 8 magnet um, kind of be, kind of round out the group. Before we get into the tones, let's talk about the gear that I'm gonna be using today. Um, so, like I said, this is Betty. This is my Warmoth Strat-esque uh, guitar parts caster, if you will, that I built during the lockdown. Um, it's pretty bare bones, just kind of standard Strat style in its, in its build. So 25 and a half inch scale, older body. Um, I think the only thing that is kind of, kind of unique about this is that the, the neck is a fender. It's a roasted maple made in Mexico neck, and it has a Pau Ferro fingerboard. Um, it has the flat oval profile, which I don't know if it's going to have an impact on the sound, um, but I love it. It's kind of like a thin U, almost, that um, a lot of the ESP guitars have. It's got 12-inch radius, jumbo frets. It's, it's awesome. Like, I, I love, I love, 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 love this neck. It turned out really nice. Um, so we're going to start with the stock A5, and then we're going to just do the swaps. Um, one thing that I will say is, um, in terms of the magnets, so... I have had an El Nico 2 in this pickup sitting in a closet for months. Um, and that's important because one thing that I've read on the web is that you need to let the magnet sit in each pickup for at least a couple days, sometimes in terms of the type of magnet, weeks if not months, just so it's able to establish the proper magnetic field so it could have differences in how it sounds. So, um, obviously, the stock JB never been touched. The A2 has been in this pickup for months and months and months, so we should be good to go. And then um, this one has had the rough cast A5 in there for quite some time. Um, got two of these guys. So this one has had the rough cast A5 in since early July, so that one should be good to go as well. Um, and then when we do the swaps, I'm going to put the, um, so this one has the Alnico 2. This is also going to have an Alnico 8 in the pickup. I'm going to swap it for the A8. And then this one, I'm going to swap the Roughcast A5 out for the unoriented A5 polished. Um, and I'm going to let those sit for about three days, uh, which is a decent amount of time. Let's them establish that field and should give us some pretty decent results. In terms of tones and gear, we're gonna be playing through Betty, like I already mentioned, and then we are also gonna be using a PRS Archon 25. One key difference though, um, in terms of the Archon, we're not gonna be using the combo speaker. Uh, from factory, 
It comes with the Celestion G12 T75, um, but we're not going to be using the combo at all. Rather, we're going to be running this out, or running the Archon out rather, to my Emperor 1x12 closed back cab, which is loaded with a Vintage 30 speaker. So in terms of pedals, we've got two that we're going to be using. Um, for our lead overdriven tone, we're going to be using the Precision Drive from Horizon Devices just to give it a little more oomph to kind of let you hear what it's going to sound like in an overdriven capacity on the lead channel. Um, and then in terms of crunch, the PRS Archon, like I've said in other videos, it does two things really, really well. It has an amazing clean channel, great for pedals, and it has a phenomenal lead channel, but it really can't do the low to mid gain crunch sounds well enough. It, it Basically, the lead channel, it's all lead. You really can't get that, that crunch sound out of it. And so in order to give you an approximation of what a crunch sound is going to sound like with each of these pickups, we're going to be using the Abasi Pathos Distortion Pedal. I've been using this for a couple of years in kind of a high gain capacity. Today we're going to have the gain rolled off substantially just to yield kind of a crunchy sound. Um, and that's how we're going to be doing that. So in terms of sound, you're going to hear the clean group all the pickups with clean, then crunch, then a lead tone, and then an overdriven lead tone. So we'll go through those a couple times, and then I'll come back at the end, and we'll wrap up. Talk to you soon.
So, wow. That was interesting. Um, let me just say, I am really excited that I did this comparison. Um, it, it, At the very least, it validates all the descriptions that I've ever read on sites like Seymour Duncan, uh, the Seymour Duncan Forum, on the gear page, Ultimate Guitar, MyLesPaul.com. It's all all over the place. Um, tons of threads on the web about swapping magnets, especially with the, um, you know, with the JB. And I gotta say, the descriptions are spot on. Um, if you read those descriptions, what I heard from these uh, comparisons were exactly like what was described. It's just, you can read something, but until you hear it, you're not really gonna be able to make up your mind. So let's get into it. Um, starting out with the stock JB. Now, we we all know what the, the stock JB sounds like, um, and this was, was no different. I will say that the, um, Betty is a pretty well-balanced guitar. If anything, it's, it's a little, I'm not gonna say overly bright, it's a little bit snappy um, when it comes to the highs, and I think that's just typically based, you know, due to the maple board, or maple neck rather, and the Pau Ferro fingerboard. And so, with that being said, I thought that the stock JB sounded good. It definitely had that upper mid spike. Now, without even comparing it to the other magnets, you can kind of hear that that was going on. It had pretty decent bass output as well, um, but then really when you started hearing the other types of magnets in the JB in comparison to the stock is when you started to hear just how much of an upper mid spike this pickup has you know, from factory. B, if, if you're in a band or you need to cut through a dense mix um, and you're looking for that JB sound, especially the lead sound, um, man, this is, this is your pickup, it's awesome. But um, for a bedroom perspective, and in Betty, nah, not this one, man. So now going through all the different types of magnets that we swapped in. Um, so going from the JB, if we kind of go down the list, going, you know, c comparing the Roughcast A5, I think the Roughcast A5 in the JB is one of those magnets which is characterized as it's a very subtle difference. It's, you know, your, your, the, the tone in terms of the highs is rolled off ever so slightly. It's a different character to the, to the feel of the, the, the guitar um, and the pickup. But I, if I'm being honest, I don't know if it does enough compared to the stock A5 polish magnet to really warrant spending the time and, and effort to swap the pick out the pickup out rather. I, I just I don't know if I really heard enough of a difference. It's a subtle difference and for some people that's exactly what they're looking for. Again, there's so many variables. Amps, the guitar, the the type of guitar, the wood, the scale, there's there's so many variables that go into this equation. I know for some people the Roughcast A5 was the one and I've played when I built Betty, the first magnet that went in the JB was this Roughcast A5. And so having had probably the most playing time of all of these on the Roughcast A5, I, and, and again, hearing a comparison between this as opposed to the magnet that's in the stock JB, I just didn't know that it, I didn't, I didn't think that it was enough to really justify a swap. And then if we go to the complete other end of the spectrum, the Alnico 8, um, wow. Uh, <laughs> definitely not what I was expecting. Um, I've heard videos of the Alnico 8 versus the stock A5 before. There's a, a, a decent video on YouTube that kind of showcased those, those, um, those differences. So I kind of knew what I was in for, but man, this just totally changes the character of, of the pickup. So with the A8, um, it definitely shifts that the mid-range, the character of the, the mid-range around with regards to the output of the pickup. Um, it definitely felt like the mid-range was 
de-emphasized, but it's only because all of the other frequencies are being raised up as well. So, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't have the mid spike. It just kind of had all the things, right? So you kind of had a lot of bass, a lot of highs, a lot of mids, everything was kind of boosted and emphasized. And I, I think for the, the, the high gain and the metal tones, this sounded really, really cool. I loved the sound on the lead and the overdriven lead channel, or overdriven lead tones rather, on this magnet. What I will say is that in terms of clean, and you, you definitely could hear this as soon as you start, I started playing, is it with, with all of those frequencies boosted, or emphasized rather, by this magnet, it almost sounded like the clean channel was breaking up. And I don't know if you picked up on that, but it was very evident as soon as I started playing, um, you might be able to see it on my face in the clips, is that the, yeah, it, the, the clean channel, it was almost to the point of breaking up. So, you know, for, for someone who is just playing metal and you happen to have a JB or you, you want to mess around with a JB, the Al Nico 8 might be your choice because this definitely sounded great for like a high gain lead type of sound. Um, for the clean and crunch though, uh, the, the fact that it was breaking up um, and it was just so in your face for the clean and crunch, I don't know if, if the A8 would be your best bet. Now moving on down to the unoriented A5. Um, this one was super interesting. Um, in the sense that you could still tell that the JB was Alnico 5, but it had a like a really different sort of flavor to the overall sound. The mid spike was still there, uh, but the frequencies were shifted. The, I guess the focus of that mid range was shifted down a little bit. So it wasn't as kind of blatantly in your face as like the A5 polished or even the Roughcast A A5. Um, I think that it definitely had more of a presence and more of a boost than something like the Alnico 8, um, but at the same time, it was just a very well-balanced kind of overall character to the sound. Um, it wasn't so in your face that it got harsh or annoying. I was able to play on the un Unoriented A5 for quite a bit of time um, and not be annoyed like I was with the stock JB. So that was really nice. Um, it kind of has has a perceived lack of output, um, which is really just to say that it's just because the frequencies are moving around, it seems like it has lower output compared to the, the, the stock A5, the Roughcast A5, as well as the Alnico 8. Um, but on the whole, I, I really liked what this magnet did. I think that this may have been my favorite of the A5s for sure. And then finally, we're coming to the Alnico 2. Um, holy moly. <laughs> what a departure in, uh, in sound for the JB. Um, I knew that this was going to have this kind of effect, um, and I'm not a stranger to Alnico 2 pickups. I've had a, a custom custom in one of my Telecasters for a while now, and that completely changed up the sound of that Tele for the better. Um, made it sound infinitely better than what it was previously, which ironically was with a JB. Um, so I, I knew what the impact was going to be, kind of, sort of in my head. But um, you know, upon hearing it and, and playing through, the, the feel was, I think, was the first thing that I really noticed. Um, way more dynamic of a pickup with the A2 magnets. Um, it was definitely more balanced. The output felt lower. It felt more like a true vintage hot pickup than, it, than kind of like more of like modern leaning with some of these other magnets. Um, just was a really pleasant sound. Um, you know, again, the, the character of the mid-range, that focus was, was shifted way, way, way more down than, than with the other kind of A5 magnets. And so it definitely didn't, it, it didn't punch through with the authority that I, any of the Alnico 5s did, but it just had its, its own thing going on. And so I think for the cleans, the crunches, um, 
you know, I, I know a lot of people who play like blues rock and, and lighter fair. If they're playing a JB, they'll usually swap out the A5 for an A2, and that's definitely a good, a, a good way to go. Um, but I think even for the heavier stuff, um, especially through a high gain amp like the Archon, having a vintage hot pickup like a JV2, it, kind of a cool proposition. I, I don't know. It, it was really, really interesting to play through this. Definitely pleasant. I liked it. Well, I honestly don't know which one my favorite is. Um, I, I, I think if I had to narrow it down, I would choose between the Unoriented A5 and the Alnico 2. Um, I liked all the other ones, they all had strengths and weaknesses, but I think from the, the type of sound that I'm going for, and especially in that guitar with this setup, it, I, either the Unoriented A5 or the A2 are gonna be the ones that I would probably go with. Next on the list, um, obviously because we've done all polished magnets here, with the exception of the Roughcast A5, I have all the Roughcast Alnico magnets um, in my possession, so we are going to do another shootout with the, the Roughcast magnets. I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Roughcast A2 in this one, I'm going to wait a month, and then I'm going to resurrect it, and we're going to just do a shootout, and then hopefully that will lead to a definitive video of all Alnico magnets, um, both Roughcast and polished, um, the, the common ones, right? Not the A3s or A4s, but the, you know, the typical cast of characters, just to see what that comparison is gonna be. So I would be really interested to hear what you thought, uh, what your favorite style or flavor of Alnico Magnet was in the JV from this, this uh, comparison. So be sure to leave comments below, um, subscribe if you like what you see, if you wanna see that rough cast demo. That's going to be coming up on the channel in the not-so-distant future. Um, and then also, if you have recommendations, if you want to see a particular pickup with a particular magnet, I am listening. I will I will do it. I will swap it in any of my guitars. Um, name the pickup, name the magnet, and I will get to it. So that is my guarantee to you. So until next time, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.